Dear Boomer, today is the 124th day of my retirement, and, um, and solitude is really a stigma in today's society. And coupled with that, taking a vow of silence, which normally is considered something to do by going to a silent retreat for a number of days and not speaking and don't, you don't even have to write anything down to get somebody's attention because everybody there has taken this vow of silence but taking a vow of silence in your everyday life might be rather difficult going into the workplace and not talking might be considered a kind of a slap in the face because people are so judgmental and um, so I don't recommend going to work and taking a vow of silence because really, especially when I was a nurse, now if you work in a cubicle and you don't really see that many people, it might be a little easier, but I worked with patients and I had to talk to them. <laughs> but mostly it, would, it was better for me to put, ask them questions and listen. But if I'm asking them questions, that certainly isn't taking the vow of silence, but the more we listen to people, the better communicators we become. Now that's an odd sort of juxtaposition. So, you know, I don't think taking a vow of silence is making a statement, kind of like you can't compare a vow of silence to fasting in protest to the war in Gaza, for instance. You really can't compare the two. We're not taking a vow of silence in order to protest anything other than the, well, we're not protesting anything, but what we are doing is listening to the silence. Even sitting here, if I were not talking, there's a lot of traffic that goes by, but I don't really have to tune into that. I don't have to relate to it. I don't have to go out and deal with it. So in a lot of ways, you can pretty much tune it out. But, um, you know, there are so many complexities of life and there are so many individual circumstances that a vow of silence may not be practical. However, I believe that I have taken extended vow of silences in this time of my retirement. And my retirement has been a liberating force in my life. I should have done it before, but I didn't. And I'm happy to have done it now. So the idea as a silence is a tool for rejuvenation. Uh, there's so many opportunities for silence and taking silence into your heart. For instance, you can um, listen to the silence between the notes of music. If you play music, you play, you know, you can play a series of notes and then pause, listen to that silence. And apparently it's that silence between the notes that makes the masterpiece of that music, a masterpiece. You can take into account the pauses between your breathing and then the, those pauses, those, this, the silence, the putting your foot on the brakes between each breath is a form of rejuvenation. So you can take a given day and um, make silence a part of that day and as I had said before gratitude pauses of gratitude throughout the day are a wonderful opportunity to tune into the fact that what you are doing is drawing to you a new life and that's what gratitude is not just gratitude for the things in your life or the dogs that are barking but it's gratitude for the things that you are magnetically drawing into your heart. The heart is the magnetic center of the body. So, you know, by being silent, it's possible to shock people because your silence is shocking because people are so revved up. And it might be that when you are silent, they might take that as a passive aggressive thing 
in response to something they've done, and it can be, you know, the, the silence that people, if, if somebody does something to you and then you react to it by not talking to them, that's not what I'm talking about. That's the vow of silence is a spiritual act. Hang on. Masa, hey, Masi. Maso. So, um, it can be a form, a powerful form of communication too, but by listening in silence and not interjecting your point of view all the time. That's, that's the point, I think. So, inner peace and clarity can be accomplished by walking, taking walks in the silence of nature, by sitting and reflecting and allowing the spirits of nature come as a balm over your whole spirit. And it's really a form of personal growth, the silence throughout the day, the, the silence that comes in meditation certainly is a way to rejuvenate and as a way to understand what silence is, how silence nourishes your soul. And um, so we have to understand these things. Well, taking a vow of silence, wouldn't it be amazing if this channel here took a vow of silence? So that could be something you can't really complete because of the people in your life. Can you imagine not talking to your children and not talking to your husband or wife or your spouse or your significant other? And it could be a hilarious experiment, though. It doesn't have to be so serious. You can take a vow of silence for as long as it takes before you're forced to talk. The phone rings and it's the bank and you have to take the call. You know, you can't just let the normal uh, aspects of routine life, you can't block those things out. And another person that comes to mind is the Peace Pilgrim. As her, her um, name, besides being the Peace Pilgrim, she was known as Mildred Norman. And she decided to just walk across the country. And she had a pencil or maybe a pen and a pad of paper that she took with her. And that's how she would communicate with people because she did take the vow of silence. I think she did speak with people. And she would take the vow of silence, especially when it came to talking about herself to people. She considered talking about herself to be a prideful thing or it was of the ego. You know, she was very humble soul and she was not into, <clears throat> she was not into, uh, you know, enlarging her personality in regards to her movement. Now she was also a peace activist. She did her activism through through peaceful, gentle silence, nonviolent communication. And um, she walked across the United States like this for 30 years. It's unbelievable. And she d would talk about, she did talk, it wasn't constant silence, about nonviolence and peace and no more war and, um, and that's what she talked about. She talked about her peace, the peace of mind, and her mission against all war. So it wasn't a complete vow of silence, but it was something that we can certainly take into our hearts as a model. She was a model. She was a saint in so many ways. She was so kind. If you ever read her books, the Peace Pilgrim books, and I don't know if they're even still in print, but they are such, they, even reading the words about her journey and her epic view of life was, is in itself a transformational experience to just read those words. To re In fact, you can just go and read her stuff online. It's, it's an amazing. So, you know, she did talk about her journey and she did not talk about herself. That is something that probably all of us can learn something about. We do need to uh, get rid of the ego, I think. The ego is something that hinders our ability to communicate lovingly 
and uh, please subscribe to the channel by the way I'm working on getting 1,000 subscribers by the end of May so that I can continue doing these videos I love doing them that's really one of the main things that I love in retirement as far as the online work there's all kinds of things to do online that are sort of tedious in terms of writing emails but or the affiliate marketing component is a little tedious because people are afraid of scams they're afraid of scams so by me getting on camera like this and talking to you about the things that matter to me that is something that will help you to understand that I'm not about to scam anybody I mean I have been scammed by stupid people who pretend to be the IRS that that did get me one time <laughs> it will never get me again <laughs> so here we go silence is golden and silence is peaceful and uh, I know that I live with these two beautiful dogs and I do talk to them out loud and I'm thinking to myself well if I want to take more of a vow of silence I can't talk to them but I can massage them and pet them and kiss them so there is some things I can do that aren't really always talking to them I think I talk to them because I'm really talking to myself <laughs> So, I love you all. Peace, peace, peace. Are you going to try to take a vow of silence for a, a, maybe during your meditation, before, during, and after? You can get Joe Dispenza's meditations on YouTube. He is one of my favorites, and Will Johnson, of course. When I meditate with Will Johnson, he often talks a lot, but in reality, we can do that meditation entirely in silence go take a look at that video I recently did with him and he describes his meditation technique to the T. So I love you all, I really do, and I, want, I wish the best for everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.